a small neighborhood at the outskirts of Jerusalem's old city. It's home to about 20,000 Palestinians. They call it Silwan. But to the growing number of Jewish settlers, the neighborhood is Ir David, city of David. It's of a special importance to the Jewish people because that is our ancestral heritage. And so everything we find, the entire story of the city of David, is really our story. The settlers are backed by an organization called Elad, whose aim is to strengthen the Jewish presence in this Palestinian neighborhood. In some cases, that means the eviction of Palestinians from their homes. Over the last 15 years, nearly half of Elad's donated funding has come from offshore companies in the Caribbean, from an anonymous donor. But a leak of bank documents has found the man behind these companies. Chelsea Football Club's owner, Russian oligarch, Roman Abramovich. BBC Arabic investigates. In 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israel occupied the West Bank and East Jerusalem. There are 220,000 Jewish settlers living in East Jerusalem. They live among at least 341,000 Palestinians. Under international law, the area is considered to be occupied territory and the settlements are deemed illegal. Israel does not accept this view and neither does the Trump administration. Hello everybody and welcome to Jerusalem once again, the city of David. It's amazing to have you back with us. You can imagine we're climbing underneath ancient Jerusalem right now. To the millions of tourists who have visited the city of David, Ilad presents itself as an archaeological organization focused on telling the story of ancient Jerusalem. Ilad say the biblical city of Jerusalem captured by King David over 3,000 years ago is located here. I realize that this is the site of King David. He's known as King David in English, David in Hebrew, Daoud in Islam, and that this is an incredible opportunity for four billion people throughout the world to connect to the original site of the city of David. But Elad has been criticized for the less advertised part of their mission, strengthening the Jewish connection to Jerusalem through Jewish settlement. <laughs> Ilad has been linked to numerous evictions of Palestinian families, including that of the Sumerian family. They live next door to the city of David. Hagit Ofran has been opposing settlements for years as part of the organization Peace Now. From their launch in 1986 till 2005, former Alad marketing director Shaha Shilo says that settling Jewish families in Silwan was Alad's main activity. It was in 2005, Shaha Shilo says, that Alad turned to tourism as a means to a particular end. Elad has not responded to the BBC's question about whether tourism was a way for them to enable more Jewish settlement in the area. Over the years, the total number of visitors to Elad's city of David has increased dramatically, and some never left. There's also been a gradual but steady growth in the number of Jewish settlers who've been settled by Elad in Silwan. All this growth has cost a lot of money, and Elad relies heavily on donations to fund its work. <laughs> 
תרומות מגובה מסוים. עמותת אלעד פרסמה מין רשימת תורמים, אבל שלא אומרת כלום. אלעד does list many donors that are easy to identify, both individuals and organizations. But nearly half of Elad's donations between 2005 and 2018 came from just four BVI-based companies. Cantley Investments Limited, Farley, Ovington and Lyston Holdings Limited. They were all registered on the same day in the British Virgin Islands. The way these companies are structured makes it impossible for the public to know who's behind them. The names of these four companies also appear in a set of bank documents leaked to BuzzFeed News. They shared them with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and the BBC. In the documents, banks report information about financial transactions and ownership of companies. Roman Abramovich is named as the ultimate beneficial owner of three companies and controls a fourth. Those companies have donated more than $100 million dollars to Elad between 2005 and 2018. That makes Roman Abramovich the single biggest donor to the Settler organization. In 2018, Mr. Abramovich was granted citizenship in Israel after facing long delays to his UK visa application. He's well known for his charitable giving. A spokesman for Mr. Abramovich has told the BBC he's a committed and generous supporter of Israeli and Jewish civil society. But until now, he's never been officially associated with any donations to any settler organization. The donations from his company started in 2005, and they have enabled Elad to become the organization they are today. In 2007, these companies were responsible for almost 90% of Elad's donations. In that year, the majority of donations were used to fund various projects of development and settlement in the city of David. The Sumerian family are on their way to Jerusalem District Court. They have to prove they have the right to live in the house members of their family have lived in since 1959. <laughs> With funding and support from NGOs and the Palestinian Authority, the family have been fighting an Israeli eviction order since 1991. The BBC has found evidence that the case against them and several other houses in Silwan has been funded by Elad. Asked by the BBC whether they were still funding the case, Elad did not respond. Elad has told the BBC they abide by the laws and regulations Israel set for non-profit organizations in terms of transparency of their donations. And on the question of whether Roman Abramovich is a donor to Elad, they say... It's our policy to respect the privacy of our donors. Uh, one can very easily walk around the city of David and see the signs of the donors that have, have decided to put their names there. The Sumerian case is not unique. Donations to Elad have enabled them to expand their footprint in Silwan. According to Peace Now's research, Elad owns and runs tourist sites on this land and has settled Jewish families in these houses. The Israeli government permits and supports Elad's work, both the settling and the digging. In 2016, the UN Security Council deemed settlement activity in occupied East Jerusalem a flagrant violation of international law by Israel. But Israel disputes this. They do not consider East Jerusalem to be occupied territory. International law has many different views and many different actors. There are many nations and countries who in fact support Israeli sovereignty over this area. Only the United States, Guatemala and Honduras recognize Israel's sovereignty over the entire city of Jerusalem. Elad's strategy seems to be working. Within just 30 years, with the support of Israel's richest man, Roman Abramovich, for many in Israel and around the world, the Palestinian neighborhood of Silwan has become the city of David. <laughs>